welcome everyone today we shall learn about chemical properties of metals and this is from lesson metallurgy for class 10 and student this is part 2 video of this lesson and in part 1 video we have covered the physical properties of metals and non metals which you can uh, which and the link you will get in the description box below so let's study the chemical properties of metals only Alright, so the chemical properties of metals, student metals are highly reactive. Why? Because they lose electron easily and become positively charged it is cations. Okay, so metal loses electron and positively ion is formed and this positively ion is called as a cation. And that is why metals are called as an electropositive element. Why? Because they are, the metals have ability to lose the electrons and they will attain their octet state. Alright, so here you can observe the metal loses electron and they will form cation and non-metal will gain or uh, uh, acquire electrons and they form negatively charged anion. Alright, so here uh, one experiment is uh, there, let's study it. Okay, so this is a combustion of metal or burning of a metal and here the, for experiment we need chemicals like samples of aluminium metal, copper, iron, lead, magnesium, zinc and sodium metals and uh, the procedure is hold the sample of each of the above metals like uh, aluminium, copper, iron and all the metals at the top of the flame as you can see in the alongside diagram of the flame of a burner with the help of a pair of a tongs or a spatula so this is a burner and uh, you have to uh, keep the metals above the flame of a burner like metal sample held on a spatula on a spatula we have to keep the metal sample and uh, here the you can you have to observe which metal catches fire readily so student uh, sodium and potassium metals they catches easily uh, catches fire readily okay and next observation is how does uh, the surface of a metal appear on catching fire so when we are burning the metal on the fire it will appear blackish in color and what is the color of the flame while the metal is burning on the flame so student when we are burning the metal on the flame above the flame the color of the flame burning flame is reddish blue all right so here different uh, reactions of metals we have to study first is reaction of metals with oxygen and second is with uh, water and third is reaction of metals with acid that is dilute as well as concentrated acid and uh, fourth one is a reaction of metal with nitric acid that is HNO3 and uh, last is reaction of metals with salts and other metals so let's study one by one okay so first we will uh, study the reaction of metal with oxygen that is O2 and we have seen the uh, just in previous slide we have seen the experiment also that is uh, metals uh, burning of a metal in presence of oxygen okay so first metals combined with oxygen on heating in or he, on heating or burning in air that is in presence of oxygen and metal oxides are formed and sodium and potassium um, are very reactive metals and sodium metal combined with oxygen in the air even at room temperature also and forms sodium oxide so the reaction is 4na plus oxygen now here sodium is in solid state and oxygen is gaseous state now when the sodium combines with oxygen or in sodium burning in presence of oxygen it will form metal oxide it is na2o sodium oxide and second is on exposure to air sodium readily catches fire it will easily catches fire and therefore to prevent the accident in the laboratory or elsewhere it is kept in kerosene so that it will not catches fire and oxides of some metals are soluble in water and they react with water to form alkali now alkali means base now here uh, so sodium oxide that is metal oxide combining with water it will form alkali that is sodium hydroxide okay now magnesium oxide we know that magnesium oxide is formed on burning magnesium ribbon in the air so this is one of the experiment in which the magnesium ribbon is burning in the air and it will form magnesium oxide and the magnesium oxide reacts with water to form alkali that is again a base called as a magnesium hydroxide now let's see the reaction so here 2 mg plus oxygen it will they will combine to form magnesium oxide and when magnesium oxide reacts with water it will form magnesium hydroxide it is MgOH twice so these are the reactions of metal with oxygen or uh, then we are burning the metal in presence of oxygen 
so this is magnesium hydroxide all right now second reaction uh, is the reaction of metals or with water now we are again one experiment is given in our textbook so for the reaction of metals with water okay so these are the called these are the experimental setup that is cork is fitted in on a glass tube and in a glass tube we have wool soaked in water and this is a water column and this uh, sample of metal like wire like you can observe the wire like okay this is a sample of metal and these uh, and these are the hydrogen gas produces when we are burning the metal and this is a hydrogen gas above the surface of a water okay and chemicals uh, we required a sample so all the chemicals are same like sample of uh, aluminum metal copper metal iron lead magnesium zinc and uh, sodium metal and along with this we were we, we required water okay and procedure is so we have to drop a piece of each of the metal separately in separate beakers filled with the cold water as you can see along the diagram water column is there okay and we have to observe which metal reacts with water so student lithium sodium potassium all the metals react with water and which uh, second question which metal floats on water and why so the see, lithium sodium and potassium metals will float on water why because they are less dense than the pure water and they will float and also being highly reactive these metals react with water and burn or explode all right now let's study the reaction one by one okay so sodium and potassium metal react rapidly and vigorously with the they react very strongly with water and liberates uh, hydrogen gas that means when sodium reacting with water uh, alkali that is sodium hydroxide is formed and along with this hydrogen gas is liberated or evolved okay so here sodium reacting with water it will form sodium hydroxide that is NaOH plus hydrogen gas is liberated or releases and along with this heat also produced and next is so, so when potassium react with water it will form again alkali that is potassium hydroxide along with this hydrogen gas is liberated and heat is also produces in both of the reaction and uh, on the other hand calcium that is ca reacts with water slowly and less vigorously so these are the reaction of metal with uh, less vigorous than the sodium and potassium okay so the hydrogen gas released in this reaction collects on the surface of the metal in the form of a bubbles and the metal floats on water and the reaction is when calcium reacting with water it will form calcium hydroxide that is caoh twice in aqueous form and along with this hydrogen gas is liberated or releases all right now next reaction the metals like uh, aluminium iron zinc do not react with cold water cold or hot water hot water but they react with steam it, uh, to form their oxide so when uh, hydrogen gas is released in this reaction also and when aluminium reacting with water now here this are the balance equation is given it means proper numbers are given up before the atoms like 2 aluminium plus 3 h2o so this is a balanced chemical reaction okay so when aluminium reacting with water here aluminium trioxide is formed along with this hydrogen gas is liberated okay and next is the uh, iron reacting with water it will form ferrous oxide plus hydrogen gases reacting form and when zinc react with water it will gives us zinc oxide along with this hydrogen gas is liberated in all the three reactions okay now next is the reaction of metals with acid so here when experimental setup is given for the reaction of metals with dilute acids okay so when a sample of aluminium magnesium uh, iron or zinc metal are treated with a dilute sulfuric acid that is h2so4 or dilute uh, hydrochloric acid that is hcl acid sulfate or chloride salts of metals are formed now we are dilute acid uh, means in the aqueous solution the less amount of a higher acid will be there okay and along so here when in the test tube you can clearly observe the hydrogen gas bubbles uh, can be seen when metal is reacting with dilute acid any of the acid like sulfuric acid or hcl acid okay so in the test tube it is containing the dilute acid uh, and zinc granules uh, and uh, so uh, along with this hydrogen gas is liberated in this reaction and uh, here you can observe the when hydrogen gas is releases from the delivery tube when we put a candle above the hydrogen gas so easily the burn by burning of the hydrogen gas a pop sound can be easily heard 
and this is a reactivity so hydrogen gas is liberated in this reaction and the reactivity of these metal can be indicated by the following sequence like magnesium is a reactive uh, then aluminium and uh, aluminium is reactive then zinc and uh, it is reactive then ferrous that is iron okay now here these are the reactions uh, which can be observed by the following uh, by the previously seen experiment so when magnesium metal reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid it will gives us magnesium chlorides and hydrogen gas is liberated and second is a reaction of aluminium with dilute acid so it will form aluminium trichloride plus hydrogen gases releases and next is a reaction of iron along with dilute hcl or hydrochloric acid it will it will form ferrous chloride and uh, along with this hydrogen gas is evolved and next is a zinc reacting with hcl it will form zinc chloride along with hydrogen gas so here these are the chloride salts of a uh, metals now next is reaction of metals with nitric acids that is hno3 okay so nitrate salts of a uh, metals uh, are formed on reaction of metals with nitric acid that is hno3 and various oxides of nitrogen that is n2o now n2o means nitrous oxide and no nitrogen oxide and nitrogen no2 means nitrogen dioxide are also form in accordance with the concentration of the nitric acid now we have a first reaction is given that is when copper reacting with uh, nitric acids it will form cupric nitrate okay cu no3 twice means cupric nitrate and along with this nitrogen dioxide plus water molecule is formed okay and this is a reaction when the uh, nitric acid concentrated nitric acid has been taken and next is a reaction when uh, dilute nitric acid is taken okay so here you can observe in the concentrated four nitric acid are there and in uh, dilute when the nitric acid is taken in dilute form 8 hno3 is there okay so when copper is reacting with dilute nitric acid it will form again cupric nitrate and along with this nitrogen oxide plus h2o is formed okay now here we have to study the aqua regia so what is this aqua regia is a highly corrosive and fuming liquid it means highly corrosive means it, it will a dis destruction of the metals or something will be causes by the aqua regia so it is highly corrosive liquid and it is one of the few reagents when uh, which can dissolve the noble metals like gold and platinum an aqua regia is freshly prepared by mixing of concentrated hydrochloric acid it is hcl and concentrated nitric acid in ratio no, 3 is to 1 so when hcl and nitric acid it is hno3 is mixed in the ratio of 3 is to 1 aqua regia is freshly prepared okay now fifth one is a reaction of metals with salts of other metals now we again have an experimental setup is given that is reaction of metal with solution of salts of other metals okay so this is a uh, here two test tubes are there in which first test tube the iron nail has been placed along with the copper sulfate solution that is copper sulfate and in the second test tube uh, copper wire is put up uh, along with the ferrous sulfate solution that is feso4 so these are the two different test tubes so apparatus we require the copper wire iron nail beaker or big test tube etc and the chemicals is aqueous solution of ferrous sulfate that is FeSO4 and copper sulfate that is CuSO4. Now let's see the experiment. Now take uh, here we have to take a clean copper wire and a clean iron nail. Okay, the, that is in uh, left hand side test tube. And next is dip the copper wire in ferrous sulfate that is FeSO4 solution and the iron nail in copper sulfate solution. And keep on observing continually at a fixed interval of time. Now, after keeping both the experimental setup set up ready, we have to observe these two test tube after phase interval of time. And first observation we have to see that in which test tube a reaction has taken place. And second is how did you recognize that a reaction has taken place and what is the type of a reaction. So, all the three questions we will uh, we are going to study in the next slide coming slide okay so now let's answer all this question we have we have, we have to see in, uh, in the previous slide so reaction of metals with salts and other metals 
so first is uh, we have seen that the reactivity of all the metals is not same it is different some metals are highly reactive and some metals are uh, less reactive and the displacement however the reagents oxygen water and acids are not useful to determine the relative reactivities of all the metals as uh, all the metals do not react with them and the displacement reaction of metals with solution of salts of other metals serves this purpose so in previous slide we have seen the, what is the type of reaction so student this is a uh, in the previous experiment the displacement type of reaction will occurs with the both the metals like uh, copper and iron and if a metal a if a metal a that means for metal a for suppose iron metal okay uh, iron nail so if a metal a displaces another metal b from the solution of its salt so now salt solution means copper sulfate or iron sulfate and then it means that the metal a is more reactive than the metal b now let's see the reaction for in the let's see this statement in the reaction form so when metal a uh, react with salt solution of metal b what happened like here we can say that when iron nail uh, iron nail is reacting with copper sulfate solution okay so metal a plus or salt solution of metal b so it will produces the salt solution of metal a that means feso4 plus metal b that is copper Okay, so this is the reaction that is ferrous reacting with copper sulfate. It will uh, ferrous will uh, displaces and it will form ferrous sulfate that is FeSO4 plus copper metal will be formed. And which metal is more reactive, copper or iron? So student, uh, iron as displaces the copper from copper sulfate. It means that metallic iron is more reactive than metallic copper. All right, now let's understand the reactivity of metals. So, student uh, scientists have de developed the reactivity series by doing many experiments of displacement reaction. Uh, and uh, one example we have seen in a previous slide that is copper sulfate and ferrous sulfate uh, experiment. And the arrangement of metals in the increasing or decreasing order of reactivity is called the reactivity series of metals. And the metals are divided into the following groups according to their reactivity and first group is a highly reactive metal and second is a moderately reactive metals that is middle type and third one is less reactive metals. Now here when the chart is given that is reactivity series of a metal in which you can, ob you can observe that from above to below top to bottom the reactivity is decreasing okay that means reactivity of metal is decreasing and if you will observe then uh, it can be clearly seen that the potassium sodium lithium calcium metal are highly reactive when reacting with water okay and next is the magnesium aluminium zinc iron tin lead metals are moderately reactive and uh, copper mercury silver also uh, less reactive and gold is the least reactive metal so this is a reactivity series of metal in which the highly reactive metals are placed in top and the least reactive like gold noble metals are placed at the bottom okay now last type of reaction is a reaction of metals with the non metals so noble metals noble gases like inner gases like helium neon and argon why these are called as a noble gases because their last because their last or outermost shell is completely filled that is octet is filled okay uh, and do not take part in the chemical reaction so far we have seen from the reaction of metals that cations are formed now cations are the positively charged uh, ion are formed by oxidation of metals now oxidation means addition of a with in presence of a oxygen okay and if you look into the electronic configuration of some metals and non metal it will be seen that driving force behind the reaction is attained to attain the electronic configuration the nearest noble gas with complete octet okay so here you can observe the sodium electronic config in the last shell of the sodium one electron is there uh, there so it will lose one electron and it will attain the octet state or it will attain the stability and chlorine which is a non-metal it will accept or acquire the electron and it will uh, complete it ox octet as its last uh, shell of the chlorine contain one only seven electrons so it will acquire one electron from sodium and it will form negatively charged cation anion sorry so positively charged sodium cation and negatively charged chlorine anion so metal do this by losing electron while non-metals do this by gaining electron just now we have seen the sodium and chlorine 
example and the outermost shell shell of the noble gas is being complete they are chemically inert and they will not react with another matters and uh, we have seen that uh, the ionic compound the ionic compound like sodium chloride is formed as a sodium metal gives away one electron while the non metal chlorine takes up one electron and the reaction is uh, written like this sodium it will react with the chlorine they will form ionic compound that is nacl sodium chloride and similarly magnesium and potassium form the ionic compound like magnesium chloride and calcium chloride potassium chloride respectively okay so sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non metal sodium lose electron chlorine accepting the electron and the ionic compound form that is sodium chloride so student that's it uh, for today as video i hope you all have understood all the reaction of metals uh, and next part of this lesson we can continue in our next session thank you mm -hmm.